Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration of Palm Sunday of the Passion of the, Our Lord. With an especially warm welcome to any visitors to this parish this morning, as well as to all of those who are watching through our mass live streaming. Live streaming. Welcome. For those with cell phones, please take this opportunity to either turn them off or mute them. The second collection today is for the Bishop's Lenten Appeal. Let's stand and join in the entrance hymn. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we come together on this Palm Sunday, which leads us into Holy Week, and we pray that the Lord may continue to strengthen us and to draw us closer to himself. We pray that just as the people on the first Palm Sunday welcomed Jesus into the community, that we too may welcome him into our lives. And so this morning we will bless these palm branches praying that the blessing of God may come down upon them as we take them and bring them into our homes. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him. Increase the faith of those who place their hope in you, O God, and graciously hear the prayers of those who call on you, that we who today hold high these branches to hail Christ in his triumph, may bear fruit for you by good works accomplished in him, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
I now invite the men of the parish to come forward as they go around the church distributing the palm branches and I ask you to kindly to remain standing. According to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethach and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you and immediately as you enter it you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever set and tie it and bring it if anyone says to you why are you doing this say the lord has need of it and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street. And they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat 
upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing. Almighty and everlasting God, who as an example of humility, for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word that him that is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me dried me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, for in him he delights. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked besets me. The rare holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why are you forsaken me? They divided my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. 
But you, O oh Lord, do not stay far off. My strength make us to help me. My God, my God, why do you save me? I will tell of your name to my King and praise you in the midst of assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. It was two days before the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him for they said not during the feast lest there be a tumult of the people and while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of ointment of pure nard, very costly. And she broke the jar and poured it over his head. But there were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was this ointment thus wasted? For this ointment might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they reproached her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you will, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burying. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached 
in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where, Where will, will you have, have us go and prepare, prepare for, you for you to, to eat, eat the Passover? Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I am to eat the past over with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were at the table eating, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him one after another, Is, is it I? I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the same dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that person by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, it would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it, and he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place which was called Gethsemane, 
And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Remove this chalice from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away safely. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Master. And he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not seize me? But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all deserted him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. And Peter had followed at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet 
Not even so did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in their midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he was silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out to the gateway, and the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, again the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes and the whole council held a consultation and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he, has, had, as he had always done for them. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him 
in a purple cloak and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on him and they began to salute him. Hail, Hail, King King of of the the Jews. Jews! And they struck his head with a reed and spat upon him and they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Uh Aha, you You who would destroy destroy the temple and and build it in three days, save yourself and come come down down from from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes, saying, He He saved saved others. others. He He cannot cannot save save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that that we we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, There was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, Behold, Behold, he he is calling Elijah. And one ran, and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that, he thus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene 
and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome, who, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him, and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if we were already dead and summoned the centurion. He asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And he brought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Today we are celebrating Palm Sunday, the day when Jesus entered into Jerusalem and the people, the community of Jerusalem, welcomed him into that community singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed to the King of Kings. As we celebrate Palm Sunday, which lead us into Holy Week. Let us open our hearts to one another. Let us open our hearts to one another, just as Jesus opened his heart to us. We stand and we profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one substantial to the Father, through him all things are made, our sin and our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon Jesus. He suffered and rose again on the third, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the election of the day and the life of the world to come. Brothers and sisters, let us now present our prayers before the Lord our God. Let us pray. 
Pope Francis challenges us to reach out to people living on the margins of society. May we follow his example of mercy and compassion for those whom society overlooks or ignores. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for countless families leaving their homes in search of security, peace, and a better life, becoming refugees and migrants in unfamiliar countries and cultures. May there be an end to injustice, violence, and bloodshed. May there be peace on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious and hear us. Let us pray for the many young people who are currently discerning their future careers. May they find wise mentors and discover a path to hope and happiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious and hear us. Let us pray. In parishes across the world, people are preparing to receive the sacraments for the first time at the Easter Vigil. May the Holy Spirit guide them into a community of welcoming and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious and hear us. Lord of life and hope, fill our hearts with your love and draw us closer to you as we enter into Holy Week. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The children will bring their collection to the front.
Are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours that it may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your and lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For though innocent, Jesus suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O Lord. You love the human race and you will always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst. And so we pray and we ask, Father most holy, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. He gave you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, look with favour on the oblation of your Church. Having called us to your table, confirm us in love and unity, together with Pope Francis and Archbishop Buti Tachale 
and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, with Blessed Saint Joseph and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you at all times. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to share at the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the Maru, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart and embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
I surrender all. Let us pray. Lord, nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'll do the note. I'll do the notices, Rod. It's fine. We take up the second collection. I'll do the notices, Rod. I'll do the notices. It's fine. It's easier now for this page. Okay. Uh, firstly, there will be altar server practice on Wednesday at four o'clock. All the children that one's going to serve over the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday must come to practice on Wednesday. Okay, four o'clock. All the altar servers. Four o'clock. On Holy Thursday night, we ask you to bring some groceries which we will use as our collection. Okay, we won't take up a monetary collection. On Good Friday, there will be two. The Holy Thursday night Mass starts at 6 o'clock until 7, and thereafter we normally pray in the garden until midnight, those who want to stay behind. Good Friday, there are two services in the morning. Please make sure that you take the newsletter and look what time we meet. Holy Saturday. Holy Saturday is going to be a long service. It starts at 6 o'clock in the evening, and it normally goes on until 10 o'clock. We start outside with the fire, walking down with the candles, coming into the church, having the baptism, and then we go home. So it takes long. If that is not your cup of tea, don't come to that service. Come Sunday morning at half past seven or at half past nine. For Holy Saturday, if you've got water and candles that needs to be blessed, bring that along, but make sure that you put your name on it. Okay. And I think that's all from my side. Please take the newsletter, read the newsletter, and make sure because we've got all the mass times in there. Or you can go on the parish website as well. Okay. I'd like to say thank you to the ladies who have beautifully decorated the church, to all the people, the families who have contributed palm branches. I think this year you really went all out, and I thank you for that. I also say thank you to all the hands that came to help, to prepare, to cut the branches, and to make sure that you have this beautiful feast. Thank you to all of you, and may God bless you. Lastly, I'm going to ask you when you leave, Please try to leave, exit the gate at the bottom, 
so that the people coming in from 9 o'clock can come in this side. Okay, so you need to go to your cars and you need to leave, so today we cannot talk and greet each other. Okay, wonderful. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of the Lord come down upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has come to an end. We go in the love of the Lord. Oh